Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're diving into that vertical test plate. We're doing an open route, that's the 3G position. Now this plate here can probably be one of the more valuable positions to learn, especially if you're looking to get into pipe welding. This is really gonna pave the way for you. If you're brand new to stick welding or you're just getting back, I'm gonna suggest you go check out my 1G, that's the flat position where we're really gonna go over settings, techniques, plate fit up, all that good stuff. Now, not too much is changing here. We're using a 1-8-60-10 cellulose rod for that root pass, and we're using a 332-7018 low hydrogen for the fill and cap. Now, our material is done on carbon steel, 3 eighths of an inch thick. We've got a 37 and a half degree bevel on each side, giving you a 75 included angle. 332 LAN with a 332 root gap. As always, it's gonna be super critical to have everything nice and consistent, no high-low, no inconsistencies in that root gap or that land. I like to tack my plates at the top and at the bottom. If you're new to open root welding, it's important to understand that your tacks normally become part of your weld. This means it's important to have good sound tacks. I'm gonna tack the beginning and the end. I normally make them about three quarters of an inch long. Proper fit up is key to controlling that root pass. Having a consistent land and root opening is gonna be critical for that root. If your fit up varies even a little bit, it can throw off your penetration. A tighter spot may not fuse all the way through, while a wider gap could blow out too much material or make it hard to control that keyhole. So taking the time to prep your joint properly pays off big time during the weld. Inconsistent fit up will lead to inconsistent results. So taking your time to fit up that joint properly is really gonna pay off when it's time to weld. For that root pass, I'm using a 1 8 of an inch 6010 at around 85 amps on DC positive. I'm using that 5P plus rod. I'm using a whip and pause technique to keyhole and to tie in both side walls evenly. As I whip forward, I pause just long enough to let the puddle fill before moving again. With 6010, you really wanna watch that keyhole. It'll tell you everything you need to know about travel speed, arc length, and what that finished weld will turn out like. Make sure you're driving the rod in deep enough into that groove. You wanna watch the sidewalls break down. A common mistake is holding too long of an arc length and resulting in not enough penetration. If you got good fresh rods and a good ground connection, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. When you run out of rod, it's time to do a restart. So when you're doing a stop and restart with a 6010, the key is to make that tie-in look seamless, especially on the backside. So if you have the option of using a grinder, I'm gonna suggest you ramp out or feather out that stop. Feathering out the end of your previous weld helps create a smooth ramp for that arc to land on. This makes it easier to blend the restart without leaving cold lap or undercut. Since the root pass is all about fusion on the backside, you wanna make sure your arc fully reestablishes the keyhole and ties into both sides. Examining that finished route, we're looking for consistency all the way along. There's no huge high spots. We don't have any large grapes. We got even ripples and there's no lack of fusion or undercut along those sidewalls. Once that route pass is complete, we're gonna examine the front side. If you can use a grinder, grind down any high spots, get rid of any slag. We wanna improve our chances here. Now it's time to use that 7018. We're welding this at about 90 amps with a 332 low hydrogen rod. With that root nice and clean, it's time for that fill pass. Now we're really gonna use our runoff and our run on tabs to start this weld, especially in the beginning as it likes to overheat and you don't wanna blast through your root, especially starting off your weld. I'm running a tight arc length and watching my puddle build evenly. I'm using a slight weave to keep it flat and fill that joint without undercut. I'm riding the bevel edges and watching the weld climb up those walls. If you're focused too much in the center, your weld won't tie in on the sidewalls. Make sure you're watching the metal flow up into that bevel. At all times, I'm watching the toes of that weld and I'm progressing upwards slowly. You don't wanna to climb too fast as it's gonna leave little low spots everywhere. We want those overlaps, we want those ripples to be nice and tight. Point into those edges. Make sure that metal is flowing into the sidewall. If not, that's where it's gonna leave undercut. If you're not moving side to side fast enough, it's gonna crown up in the middle and it's gonna leave your edges filled with slag. When it's time to do a restart, we're gonna strike from the top down. We're gonna trace that crater and then return back to our regular travel speed. 
it's common to see the top of your weld stick out further to the bevel than it is at the start. This is because the top of the plate is really heating up, so we may have to adjust our travel speed to move a little bit faster. With that fill pass brought up to the top of the bevel without going over, now it's time to cap. Now one thing I see often is if you've got undercut or you've got some slag trapped in the toes of that fill pass, it's not a bad idea to take that grinder, to take that cutoff wheel and just grind two little wagon tracks on each side. That'll clean out that weld for you to have it nice and clean when it's time to cap. Start at the bottom and run that grinder straight up. There's no need to go any further than the width of that bevel. We're gonna do the same on both sides. With that fill pass all cleaned up, now it's time to cap. This is my favorite part. This is what we're gonna see, so let's make that nice and consistent. There's no need to go any wider than that bevel. You've got about a sixteenth on each side and you don't wanna go any wider than that. I like to use something called a herringbone weave. This is where you go quick across the middle and we pause on the sides. I like the analogy of three people in a pickup truck sharing a beer. The driver takes a sip and passes it to the middle person. The middle person takes a sip, passes it to the passenger. The passenger takes a sip, passes it back to the middle person. The middle person takes a sip, passes it back to the driver. Who's getting the most beer? The person in the middle. Once again, we're going quick across the middle and we're pausing on those sides. We're only drawing up about half the diameter of the rod at a time. When we get to pausing on that side, I like to point in just a little bit and then quick across the middle and then point into that other side and continue that all the way along, keeping it nice and uniform. You want a uniform bead profile and good fusion on both sides. The middle will take care of itself. This is why we move quick across that middle and pause on the sides. I like to turn my wrist even ever so slightly to point into that side to make sure I don't have any undercut or any underfill. With that weld complete, we're gonna examine this, make sure that we're not too high, make sure we're not too low, no undercut. We should be about a dime high and a dime wide. Once we do that, we're gonna take it over to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut three strips out of this thing and we're gonna bend two roots and we're gonna bend one cap. It's important to note that this could have been done in stringer welds over the weave, which is very common. Same weld size, just a different technique. Oftentimes, stringer welds will precede a weave and that all depends on the procedure. Regardless of the technique you use, stringer or weave, they can both produce a sound weld. And that's a wrap on your 3G open route on 3 8 carbon steel with your 6010 and your 7018. So if you have any questions on settings, techniques, or setup, please drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep those lenses clean.